Hi, my name is Oscar Gill. My presentation is on Flora McDonald. She is a famous and influential woman, influential woman during the American Revolutionary period. She was born in 1722 in Milton, South East, to a wealth placed family in the McDonald clan. Flora was brought up in the sky and brought and received some education. The young people of the island were gathered into conveniently placed schools at various points where a teacher from the mainland gave instruction. Flora's father had died in 1724. Four years later, her mother uh, married Hugh MacDonald, a member of the same clan, though only a distant relative, and he lived in Armandale on Skye. There then arose the question where Flora should remain with her brother, Angus in I iced or go with her mother to Skye. Flora was given her choice and decided firmly I will stay at Milton's place because I love it till my dear mama comes back to me. Among the farmers and their families, Flora had many friends and learned to sing Gaelic songs. She grew up hearing many stories about Scotland's past including the story of King James II, a Catholic king of England and Scotland who was removed from the throne and exiled in 1688 by the Protestants who feared the influence of a Catholic king. Many Scots remained hopeful that someday King James' son would return to the lead Scotland. This son, James Francis Edward Stewart, tried to regain the throne but failed. The burden fell to his son, Charles Edward Stewart, called Bonnie Prince Charlie. The Scots who wished for the return of Scottish king called themselves Jacobites in honor of King James. They talked about the day when Bonnie Prince Charlie would return to Scotland and regain the throne. Flora MacDonald lived quietly for seven years when she was taken into the mansion of the Clanorites, which of course, which, which her family were cadets. Four years later, she went to Edinburgh with Sir Alexander MacDonald and his wife to continue her education. For six years, Flora lived very happily in Edinburgh and then returned to Skye. In 1745, Bonnie Prince Charlie arrived in Scotland and quietly organized his supporters. He then started a rebellion in Scotland in an effort to regain the throne, and after a few successful battles, Prince Charles and the Jacobites suffered a horrible defeat in the bloody battle at Culloden. Following the battle, King George II of England issued orders to torture and punish those who had helped the prince and Prince Charlie needed to get out of Scotland quickly before he was killed. The whole area was filled with soldiers searching for him. Flora MacDonald was staying with the Clan Clanonald in Benbalcula when the prince arrived there. In imminent danger of capture, his only chance to escape was to leave the island in disguise. Many people helped Prince Charles, but it was Flora MacDonald who perhaps helped him most. No house was safe for him, and he had to hide among the rocks of the seashore, shivering with cold and drenched with rain. He scarcely dared to leave his hiding place, and was almost dying of hunger. The commander of the local militia was Flora's stepfather, Hugh MacDonald, and he gave her a path to the mainland for herself, an Irish maid named Betty, and a boat's crew of six men. With great danger to herself, Flora arrived at a place where the prince was hiding and brought a dress for the prince to wear. They went to the house of the friend where Flora asked that she and her maid Betty might stay the night. This friend was very fond of Flora and she was also a Jacobite. When she was told who Betty was, she gave the prince her best room. The little girl came into the hall while Betty was standing there and ran away frightened at the great tall woman, but none of the others in the house suspected who she was. Disguised as Flora MacDonald's maid, Prince Charlie traveled, traveled for many days escaping many dangers. The king's men followed them closely and gave them no rest. The trip was dangerous and they spent many days tired, hungry, soaking wet from the Scottish rains. Flora could have left the prince and returned home, but she refused. After several weeks, the prince found a ship that took him to France. They said a sat farewell at each other. When she returned home to the Isle of Skye, Flora was arrested by the English for aiding the prince in his escape and taken on a long fee journey to London to await trial. 
conditions on the ship were horrible, but she charmed the crew, and the captain of the ship wrote a letter requesting the Flora be kept out of jail. After a short imprisonment in the Tower of London, Flora was kept in a private home with several other classmates, clansmen, rather than in, rather than in jail. Flora made many friends among the English Jacobites who came to visit her regularly. They knew her story and felt privileged to spend time with such a brave young woman. Flora returned home two years later with many friends and a sizable fortune and raised for her by the English Jacobites. She never stood trial. In 1750, Flora married Alan MacDonald. Uh, he was the Lord of Kingsborough, who described her as a woman of soft features, gentle manners, and elegant presence. They lived at Flogging Gary in Scotland for many years and seven children. The family went into a, a great debt because of high land rents, and bad weather ruined their crops. They were desperate for McDonald's and many others throughout the Scotland. In 1774, Flora and Alan decided to immigrate to North Carolina, where they believed they could begin a better life. Before they were allowed to make voyage from Scotland, they had taken an oath, along with the other Highlanders from Scotland, to remain forever loyal to the British crown. They landed in Wilmington in the fall of 1774, and there they found a substantial Scottish population, most members of whom were aware of Flora MacDonald's efforts to save the prince. She was quite a heroine in North Carolina among the Scots. The MacDonald family settled in a plantation called Killigray in Anson County. The American Revolution was fought not only by our five by armies, everyone who lived in the colonies was part of the war for independence. North Carolina women contributed and suffered much on both sides of the war. At that time, the population of North Carolina was mostly rural. Men lived with their wives and families on farms. Like women everywhere in those days, the farmers' wives had established rules within the family. As tensions grew between the colonists and the British colonists' um, government, North Carolina divided into three groups, the loyalists who supported the British, the patriots, and those who did not take stand or for or against independence. The last group included pacifists like the Moravians, Mer the Quakers who were neutral because of their deeply held religious objections to war. Each group had women who served and suffered during the revolution. The MacDonalds soon learned about the growing conflict between the colonists and King George III. Although they tried to stay out of trouble, eventually everyone had to choose sides. In 1775, the world governor, Josiah Martin, tried to raise a small North Carolina Highland regiment to fight the Patriots in which Alan MacDonald became a major, along with his son and son-in-law. He was part of the 1600 North Carolina troops who marched off to join the British Army. Before they left, Flora, riding a beautiful white horse, came to the camp to cheer the men on and called on them to fight bravely and remain loyal to the king. Flora rode with them during the first day march and spent the night with them before returning home. On February 27, 1776, at the Battle of Wars Creek Bridge near Wilmington, the Highlanders encountered the North Carolina Patriots, who had taken the planks off the bridge and greased the side rails. As the Loyalists tried to cross the bridge, Patriots shot at them and killed many. The entire terror deal only lasted a few minutes, but all were killed or captured. Of the more than 700 prisoners, the private soldiers were released on parole. The officers, including Allen McDonald, afterward were exchanged as prisoners in sent to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Their son and their son-in-law were jailed. Courageously, Flora visited and comforted the families of others whose men had been killed or captured. Flora was devastated. Her life in North Carolina had come to a close before it had really begun. She had to face the anger and violence of the local patriots with help of her remaining son. Their plantation was robbed and Flora fled to the daughter's home nearby. State government seized Kills Gray and Flora MacDonald was left homeless and left nearly penniless. She eventually left America for Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. On Alan's advice, Flora returned to Scotland on a merchant ship in 1779. 
On the voyage, the vessel was attacked by the French privateer. Flora displayed great bravery and insisted on remaining on the deck where she got her arm broken on the fight. She reached, she reached home safely and settled down to await her husband's return. Alan was finally able to join Flora after his release from prison in 1783 and there lived in Kingsborough on the Isle of Skye for the remainder of their lives. After living through glory and hard times, Flora MacDonald died March 4, 1790 at the age of 58. She was buried in the graveyard at Kilsmore, just two miles from the spot where her Prince Charles uh, reached safety in 1746. Her death was deeply mourned by the people by of Sky. She's said to have more than 3,000 who attended her funeral, at which 300 gallons of whiskey were drunk. Although Flora MacDonald lived in North Carolina only a short time, her legend took hold within the Scottish population there and have continued as an important symbol of North Carolina Scots history. Her legend continues to today as a story of bravery, romance, and loyalty. The source um, I got from womanshistoryblog.com. Um, thank you for your time.